Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric today here in an attic helping somebody uh, take a look at it. It's an inspection to figure out what's going on with the knob and two. Uh, they're trying to sell the home. <clears throat> All we know is built in 1908, so approaching 110 years old, uh, 11 decades. And I've seen five different types of wire going on here. Knob and two, the blue type, cloth, uh, old, the Romex that's white. And then you've got your newer yellow and white cable stuff. So five different types of wiring going on here. And we're trying to figure out what's going on, why it's flickering. And I think I found it. So first of all, when I show you something, I had to trace this out. This is representing how I figured out 12 gauge, my boxes, knob and two. Pencil's not turned out too well, sorry about that, but I color-coded everything. And then I came to my schematic, and I traced through, and I got 35 openings on one circuit, circuit 26. And I went through to the top, and I labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19 drill holes from the top between lights and power plugs switch looping down, or just power outlets or switch loop switches. So this kind of shows me a schematic, and then I did the pink and purple, which was new cut-in boxes. The blue right there is going to be your wire mold on surface mount, and then the black ones are old-school metal boxes. And um, the green wire was the white, the orange was the yellow, older white type, uh, the green was the newer 14-gauge, uh, and the yellow was the number 12 new. Uh, red and black there was going to be knob and two. <clears throat> the gray that looks like silver gray, that's my cloth. So now I'm going up above and I'm tracing everything and I had to go through this attic and pull the insulation out. Uh, not out, but to the side. It took me a couple hours. But they want to rewire this. But look at this stuff. Look at that shit. It's knob and two going across. If you want to know what knob and two is, well, it stands for a knob and two wire. One, two. Don't pay attention to this. That's a cloth wire from the 50s. But here's your knob and two. It's a neutral, it looks like. We're not allowed to splice on that for whatever reason. No way. And look at this stuff. No wonder it was... I found the flicker going on downstairs right here. All this shit. And then over here is a box put in. <clears throat> looks like a guy decided to give a closet light. That was about, you know, in the early 90s. That type style. This is in the 50s. No, no ground. That is a ground. That doesn't do shit. I don't know why he even bothered grounding a box off of a switch leg. That is definitely somebody who didn't know what they were doing in electrical. This has a cloth, so this box has no ground, of course. Look at this over here. It's supposed to cut out your old knob and two so people know what the hell's going on. Any old wire. And it's not. So I got up here thinking all this stuff was hot. This part's dead. It's going across the whole attic. There's your blue wire. <clears throat> that does a switch leg to that light right down there. 19 oh blue it's probably got 60s written all over it and look at this here's your old service mast <clears throat> they moved it a panel over to a bathroom we had to move that from that from inside to outside and look at this rat's nest i mean i don't normally get upset and too bad but what the fuck who would even wire that i won't tap anything on knob and two i don't give a crap what job it is i'll go find a cleaner safer job especially if a customer's trying to bend my arm backwards i just tell them to take a hike they can let their own house burn down but look at all this stuff just to give you a retrospect the other knob and two porcelain are these guys it's a knob and two wire neutral next to the hot in the same bay okay <clears throat> so as we take a bigger perspective coming around i labeled all my boxes from above one you know going across Here's your branch circuit inside. Here's some new wire going down, yellow and white. This guy didn't know what he was doing. He used all his white as hot as 14, and he wanted to make sure he identified it at the bottom because he didn't know how to figure that out. He puts a 12 gauge for a switch leg. Going to one light. This right here is pretty spooky. This power is still hot. It comes over and they split it in the cloth. They did that years ago. All the insulation was on this in dirt wood i found old uh paper wallpaper crap 
over there right on top of these splices from the 80s that's when everybody did wallpaper so you're coming across here okay the only way to test if this stuff is hot which is tough because if you get a back feed on your neutral these stupid wiggies will read 40 volts but I think that's my hot safe to say here's my neutral here's my hot so I'm gonna come up here with some spray paint I know it seems kind of anal but they want a really good bid to figure out how to fix this and you know fixing a whole home on this side which were you know is a, a living room and a little dining area an entry in a bedroom you know you could get into about three circuits right there but this stuff's been running on one for god knows how long they wondered why one of the outlets fried down below when they put in a space heater so i'm going to take red and identify as i trace everything and take a bigger perspective and i'll come along and i'll do some white then i'll know okay that's my neutral and that's my hot <clears throat> and i'll trace this all the way down there's an old another yellow wire that's going down by the old fireplace i saw that okay and then right here comes over this is a wonderful splice this is 19 yeah this one was right over the closet constant hot still not figured out what they're doing here but looks like two hots or two hots out and this is my hot in right there the knob and two that's what's feeding it <clears throat> so if this comes in and splices and the neutrals over here see how my neutrals back fed now <clears throat> looks like it's two 120s it's not remember over there that was the neutral not picking up anything <clears throat> that's what's so scary about knob and two could have been this guy sitting on it <laughs> look at that that yellow wire was making it pick up see there's a little bit of coming back the closer you get to the splice that's because these things don't know the difference but a true 120 it'll be constant the whole time so anyways this is the neutral but it's picking it up here look at that one side of the splice, no. Eh, it's a little bit. This is definitely my hot right here. Here's another splice for knob and two. <clears throat> and then th this way was towards the panel. This way is the, towards the front of the home, away from the panel. So we're feeding current this way. Coming across. Hitting two porcelain knobs. <clears throat> Here's my hot going down. This is the outlet that fried. How do I know? Because my wife was pounding with a broomstick and I felt it vibrate right here. I labeled it eight and I've already done my homework for hours. This goes down. This neutral's coming back up. This is the one that fried. So the curtain had to come up, go through this splice and start heading back home through all that problem. Here's some more knob and two. And then it ends. Neutral goes this way to that over here which is a light fixture and then here's guess what here's your neutral going down but you don't need a neutral and a light switch box but they do here's your hots and then we have a uh, two switch legs so this is a switch leg hot neutral switch leg this switch leg comes over to the living room and then look at this fun box so this is why you gotta be careful. I mean, look at they put a deck screw, almost nicked your wire. And coming over to this splice, this is your switch leg in, which they brought into this box, and then they took the neutral this way and decided to travel it to there. So if you're an electron and you're coming back and you're running a 1500 watt space heater, and you're some rent uh, tenant renting a house and you don't know the difference. All that current is running all the way back through all these shitty splices. Now that knob and tooth, if it wasn't touched, it goes pretty long. I mean, that stuff, I've seen it 110, 120 years old, and it hasn't had an issue. Then it goes into here, and guess what? Problematic splice. Because the guy got greedy and tapped too much shit in one corner. 
and then this guy is supposed to go back to the panel. So my thought is this is where the feed is. Yep, bingo. Here it is. There it is, going to the old service mast. Look at that. And they cut that off and tarred the crap out of that above. Here's your neutral, still picking up current too. Back feed. This is how you get bit on a neutral in the house. So we got some old knob and two going this way too. And then coming down here. And then this is the joyous thing. Decided to oh drop the ceiling years ago and then put junction boxes in the freaking ceiling. So I saw one in another area over here through that little crack down there that I can't get to. It's like, how, how do we expect to ever splice that again? So that's how you know homeowners have had their hands on stuff or really a really bad handyman or dumb, dumb electrician. So let's go down out of the crawl space. Sorry, this video is getting a little long. But when you guys ask me in a house that's, oh, got a real pretty brand new granite, brand new tile floors, 10 foot Victorian style home, bungalow. Oh, can't we just pull a chain down the wall and keep it real simple? I could ask the dumbest thing some days. Here's the bottom line. In order to do a house of this nature, you know, there, you got to be able to fish the walls. Sometimes the walls aren't fishable that deep, but these ones seem like they are. We'll find out. I'm trying to figure out how to do it, if it's through crawl space or through the attic. But see, they, they ran power from wire mold across here, here, to here. And guess what? That little fireplace started to cause an issue. And this looks like the wire goes down, but it doesn't. Part of it goes through to another surface mount wire mold. So when somebody asks me what does wire mold look like, that's what it looks like. It sticks off the wall and it hugs the wall. Not the prettiest thing. And that splice right there, you can tell the difference. Here's your old cloth right in the back. Here's your newer stuff right here. So we think that that splice comes up, comes over because they can't find it in the attic and then somehow joins over to here. And this is our fried outlet from our space heater. Pretty, huh? How you know you're fried without taking the, the device out? Look at that. You can see it right there on the hot side. So, <clears throat> again, I've got proof that I've got five different types of wire. I've got all different kinds of cut-in boxes. Brand new cut-in box right there. Look at that. Older style cut-in box right there. Great. And then I got stuff like <coughs> newer cut-in fiberglass. I use those all the time. And then here's an old metallic. <coughs> got the angled in the back. Square little knockout looking things right there. That's how you know it's original. And look how that knob and two is coming in the side. Real safe, huh? See that? I think I put in an outlet box and it won't hold. Well, I wonder why. It's lathenplast. It's never going to hold on that stuff that thick. So, outlet's coming out of the wall. Not sure what to do with that yet. There are times that we decide to turn away a job. Charge them for an inspection fee of our time. Clean, look at it, trace it out, and then say, here's your luck. Uh, stuff like this, usually I tell people the best thing to do is definitely pull your plaster, take out your walls, and start over. But the newer codes today, it's almost impossible to try to pass permit with this kind of stuff. This is a prime example. I've talked to inspectors about it. They're you know, true electrical inspectors, not your home inspectors. And uh, you know, a lot of time, they just the code is the code, and that's cut and dry, and you got to figure it out. The other side of it is being that the homeowner doesn't want to trash anything as beautiful as this, of course. But then what do you do? So that's kind of a um, really good video. I hope this gets a lot of hits. I hope it helps people out. It's no solution right now. I'm just trying to figure out if I even want to stay on that job and maybe button it up, put everything back in in a couple hours, and then just call it good and tell them, here's our map, here's what we did, here's what you need to do, and then let them decide. Um, anyways, thanks for joining us, guys.